morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug Free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, our true skin health products, a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, our number on the bright side today and every day is 844-236-6010. We love hearing from you, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please call the bright side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. You can purchase longevity products off the phone. You can also sign up to join the bright side Ben team. If you're interested in starting a business, if you're interested in making a little bit of money, working for yourself, being your own boss, working out of your home in your PJs, first thing in the morning and being done by noon, that's what I love about having my own business and being an entrepreneur is I can make my own hours, make as much money or as little money as I like. Doesn't that sound great? Don't you want to be your own boss? Do you really like working for somebody else? You can supplement your income or you can have a full-time income. Some folks are making $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month. You can make $100 a month if you like, just making hobby money as it's called. If you're interested, if this sounds good to you, if you've benefited yourself or your friends or loved ones have benefit, benefited from nutritional supplementation, help spread the word. Pay it forward. Make a little money at the same time. Call 866-735-2470 if that sounds like a good idea. Or you can head over to brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Click on the join the team link for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business for yourself. Even if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, click on the join the team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay. We are back on the bright side. Got lines open, 844-236-6010. Thanks for being here, folks. We've been talking about essential fatty acids, omega-6s and omega-3s, super essential fats, essential as vitamins. They are fat vitamins. They're not called vitamins, but you can think of them like vitamins. They have the same kind of effect, same kind of property. In fact, they're even more powerful in the sense that essential fatty acids work at the genetic level. They turn genes on. They are said to be ligands, L-I-G-A-N-D-S. That means they plug into genes and turn them on. They're epigenetic factors. And uh, they're not only powerful nutritional substances, they're not only nutritional substances, they actually have drug-like properties. One of my favorite papers is this uh, one I've been talking about for the last couple of days from the journal Lipids in Health and Disease. Essential fatty acids and their metabolites could function as endogenous, that means internal, HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, that is, they act like statin drugs. Essential fatty acids can act like ACE enzyme inhibitors, that means they act like blood pressure drugs. Essential fatty acids can act like antiarrhythmics, that means they can act like beta blockers, antihypertensives, antiatherosclerotic, anti-inflammatory, cytoprotective, and cardioprotective molecules. That's a lot of benefits from something that you can get from longevity as your ultimate EFAs. That's a lot of benefits from something you buy at a health food store. That's a lot of benefits from a substance that's found in foods. 
They're drug-like substances. Back in the early 2000s, there was this idea that became popular in the world of cardiology, the notion of a polypill. A, a polypill is a, a drug that has three drugs in it. Polypill for heart disease began to gain some traction around 2000, 2001 in the medical community. It was first conjured up by a couple of British medical professors, Sir Nicholas Ward and Professor Malcolm Law. They wrote an article in the British Medical Journal. The idea was that by taking one pill that combined three drugs in one, a diuretic and a beta blocker and an ACE inhibitor a drug, ACE inhibitors are like Captop Captopril or Zestril, the idea was by taking this poly pill, which combined three pills in one, cardiovascular health issues could be reduced by up to 80%, according to uh, Sir Nicholas Ward and Professor Malcolm Law. Ward and Law proposed that the poly pill could reduce cardiovascular events if taken by everyone from the age of 55 onwards. They call that primary prevention, pr primary prevention, regardless of whether these people had heart disease. They wanted everybody to take the poly pill. Unbelievable how medical professors, seemingly intelligent medical professors, could actually think that this is a good idea. Not to take a drug, but to take a drug that combines three drugs in one. Three toxic drugs in one for everybody, regardless of their health status. And, of course, they said that if you had a heart attack, obviously you should take, uh, all people should take a, 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 a poly pill if they had pre existing cardiovascular disease, regardless of their age. They call that secondary prevention. Never mind that beta blockers and statins and even diuretics are drugs with a toxic profile. That is, they come replete with side effects. There is no drug that does not have side effects. There is no drug that does not poison the body. And these two so smart, they're dumb professors actually wanted people to take three of them, three in one. Beta blockers are particularly toxic. How does the beta blocker work? And these are among the most popular drugs of all, um, especially when it comes to cardiovascular health issues. How do they work? They slow down the heart. How do they slow down the heart? Not kindly and gently. They slow down the heart by poisoning it. But diuretics are maybe a little bit better, but they still have their own problems. Diuretics deplete the body magnesium, critical for the heart. They deplete the body calcium, critical for the heart. They deplete the body of sodium and potassium, also critical for the heart. And stand drugs deplete the body of coenzyme Q10, again, critical for the heart. And these doctors want you to take three pills in one that will deplete your body of magnesium, calcium, sodium, uh, and, and potassium that uh, slow down or poison the heart and that deprive your body of uh, one of its most heart-friendly nutrients, coenzyme Q10. Well, guess what, folks? Essential fatty acids are a natural Nature, food-based poly pill. Yes, EFAs act like a poly pill. Reading from this article, Journal in Lipids and Health and Disease, October 2008, EFAs and their metabolites show, there's a quote, direct quote, EFAs, <clears throat> excuse me, and their metabolites show all the classic actions expected of the poly pill, unquote. So what's it going to be? You want to take a beta blocker and a diuretic and a statin drug with toxic side effects like a loss of minerals and loss of coenzyme Q10 and a shutdown of the heart? Or do you want to take an essential fatty acid that will act like the poly pill, but instead of side effects, you're going to get beneficial effects like better skin, better cognitive functioning, better mood. EFAs prevent blood clotting. EFAs lower blood pressure. EFAs have antiarrhythmic effects. That is, if you're dealing with AFib, or you're dealing with uh, ventricular tachycardia. EFAs balance out LDL and cholesterol. EFL, EFAs balance out uh, homocysteine, which is one of the most cardiotoxic biochemicals in the body. EFAs are anti-inflammatory. EFAs slow down the aging process. EFAs do everything your poly pill does, but EFAs are already in the body. EFAs are biogenic. That is, they're found in the body. EFAs are essential nutrients. EFAs have zero toxic side effects. If you are on a beta blocker, get on your ultimate EFAs. You'll be able to wean yourself off your beta blockers if you're on a diuretic likewise, and if you're on a statin drug, of course. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You are listening to The Bright Side. We will return with more good health information right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we're back. 
back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470 if you want to talk to a real person. Ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business for yourself. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com, our new truth cleansers, our hyaluronic honey cleanser made with hyaluronic acid for softening the skin and lots of Colorado clover honey. Also our Truth Peppermint Salicylic Cleanser made with the be- my favorite beta-hydroxy acid, salicylic acid for softening the skin and for anti-aging. Also helps lighten the skin. As you wash your face, you can lighten your skin. Unroofs comedones to be, helps heal the skin if you're dealing with blemishes or acne. And of course, salicylic acid has wonderful anti-aging properties, collagen stimulating properties, as well as its topical skin softening properties. You can find out about our Truth Salicylic, Peppermint Salicylic Cleanser and Truth Hyaluronic Honey Cleanser, as well as all the other Truth products at Truth. TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. So EFAs, we talk about EFAs for the skin a lot. I've been, I've recommended EFAs. I've known about EFAs since I started recommending them for folks who had dry skin. Dry skin is a classic sign of essential fatty acid deficiency. EFAs are important for the liver. EFAs play a role in brain health and mental health issues. They're antidepressants, and they are especially important for cardiovascular health issues. They act like a natural poly pill. Instead of using the polypill, which is a combination of statin, a statin drug, a beta blocker, and a diuretic, you can use a all-natural, food-based supplement that will give you side benefits instead of side effects, and that's your essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids will uh, put you in a better mood. They act as a, uh, uh, they can help you reduce fat cravings, and they act as an appetite suppressant. And they can be taken by anyone, including by uh, pregnant women, nursing moms, children, even infants can use essential fatty acids. In fact, mother's milk is loaded with essential fatty acids. And of course, you'll also be reducing your likelihood of heart disease and strokes. EFAs are, as we said before, long fats. Fats come in three sizes, short, medium, long. EFAs are the long fats. You can get them as un- uh, you can get these long fats as liquid or you can get them as solid. The liquid long fats are said to be unsaturated. EFAs are actually poly unsaturated. You may have heard that term. Saturation refers to um, how liquid, but from a chemical standpoint, double bonds. I don't want to get too much into the weeds and biochemistry, but polyunsaturated fats are super liquidy. Uh, Monounsaturated fats are liquidy also. Uh, but the un- polyunsaturated fats, those are the ones that are really, really unstable. EFAs have, uh, are made up of polyunsaturated fats. That's why they're so unstable. Vegetable oils typically will contain lots of polyunsaturated fats. Monounsaturated fats are not quite as unstable as polyunsaturated fats. Olive oil contains monounsaturated fats. There's a new uh, monounsaturated fat. Actually, I think this is actually a polyunsaturated fat that you're starting to hear about now. It's called omega-7 palmitoleic acid. Um, actually, I think that's a monounsaturated fat now that I think about it. So it's, a little, it's a little more stable than the polyunsaturated fats. Uh, palmito, palmitoleic acid, known as omega-7, is starting to become more popular and more recognized for its health benefits, especially for folks who have blood sugar problems. Uh, it's anti-diabetic. It's got blood sugar control properties. Uh, you still don't hear a lot about omega-7 fatty acids. Omega-7 fatty acids are very tough to purify, so it's hard to get straight omega-7 fatty acids. There are supplements of, of omega-7s that you can get in the, off the Internet, off Amazon, or in health food stores, although many of them are not pure palmitoleic acid, not, not pure uh, omega uh, I should say not pure palmitoleic acid. There's various omega-7s. Palmitoleic acid is the really nutritionally valuable one. There are other omega-7s, and it's tough to get a pure palmitoleic acid supplement because it's really tough to create a pure product. Nonetheless, if you do get palmitoleic acid, you'll probably get some impurities, but you'll still get some palmitoleic acid, and it has some wonderful benefits for diabetics, as I said, also for people who are dealing with fatty liver disease. 
Uh, it can help protect beta cells, pancreatic beta cells. If you're uh, dealing with type 1 diabetes, it also can improve the processing of fats. It's been, known, it's been shown to uh, have uh, benefits for folks who are using statin drugs. It has statin drug-like effects. It helps increase HDL and lower LDL if that's what you want to do. It also has blood thinning effects like omega-3 fatty acids do. It's an, an appetite suppressant. That's one of the neatest benefits of uh, palmit oleic acid. Palmit oleic is spelled P-A-L, P-A-L-M. O-L-E-I-C, palmit oleic acid. It's uh, appetite suppressant. If you're trying to lose some weight, you might want to take a few of these palmit oleic acid capsules a couple of hours before your meals, according to an article in the June 2013 issue of the journal Appetite. Palmit oleic acid, quote, induces satiety and enhances the release of satiety hormones, unquote. So if you're uh, want to lose a few pounds or you're just want to you feel like you're overeating you're eating too much and overeating can definitely be an addiction maybe try taking a little palmitto oleic acid take a couple supplements two three supplements take as many as you want it's pretty much non-toxic take three or four two three four of these uh, palmitto oleic acid capsules a couple hours before you eat and you may find that you're eating less food Palmitto oleic acid's main mechanism of action and one of the main reasons for its wide spectrum of benefits is it has an activating effect on fat. It helps the body turn fat into energy and this property means that it slows down the hormone effects of fat cells. Fat cells make hormones. Fat cells make inflammatory hormones and the more fat that's in a fat cell, the more hormonally active it is going to be. Fat cells produce hormones. They call them adipokines. Adipo means fat, kine means hormone. Adipokines are fat hormones. They're made in fat cells. And these adipokines are powerfully inflammatory. And this inflammatory property is what accounts for the health challenges that are linked to obesity. As well as just plain old increases in body fat. You don't have to be obese to be suffering from some of these inflammatory health challenges that are linked to active fat cells. You can simply be carrying a high percentage of body fat. The inflammatory properties of fat cells are why diabetics have such an issue with, uh, with obesity. Uh, fat cells, the inflammatory property of fat cells can lead to insulin resistance. They can lead to increased blood triglycerides. The inflammatory properties of fat cells can lead to fatty livers. It can lead to blood clotting problems. And so by supporting fat burning, omega-7 fatty acids help improve all of these conditions. They act like blood thinners. They reduce blood fats. They lower cholesterol. They're important for insulin resistance. This is amazing, folks. Palmit oleic acid has all of these benefits you can get right off the internet. Omega-7 palmit oleic acid has been shown to lower cholesterol. As I say, it's a natural statin drug. If you're taking a statin drug, try using palmit oleic acid. You may be able to wean yourself off your statin drug. As, as I've said so many times before, if you're on a statin drug or any drug for the rest of your life, quote, for the rest of your life, your number one health challenge should be to figure out how to wean yourself off of it. And if, when it comes to statin drugs, you might want to consider getting on some palmit oleic acid, which by the way, can help you lose weight. If you want to get your palmit oleic acid from foods, there are wonderful food sources too which we'll talk about when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Thanks for joining us. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you've got questions about the longevity products or essential fatty acids or palmitto oleic acid, omega-7 fatty acids. If you have a comment or a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here momentarily. I want to read a couple interesting stories here from the British Medical Journal. Slow eating speed may be linked to weight loss. Slowing down the speed at which you eat along with cutting out after-dinner snacks and not eating within two hours of going to sleep may all help to shed the pounds, according to research published in the online journal, British Medical Journal Open. Changes in these eating habits were strongly associated with lower obesity and weight and smaller weight circumference. We have so much control over our bodies that we're not being told about, and this is a classic example, something that's just as simple as slow eating. Fast food manufacturers understand that we will eat less when we eat slow. That's why they put 
softening agents in the food. You ever notice how Boston chicken and McDonald's hamburgers have a mushy quality to them? That mushy quality is actually intentional. That mushy quality is, is encouraged by special chemicals that are put into the food, softening chemicals. For example, phosphates are added to chickens. They're added to the chicken while they're still alive. And they're added to the chicken after the chicken is slaughtered to soften the meat. Because food processors and fast food companies know that the softer the food, the more you're likely to eat. They call it throat slip. The faster your food slips down your throat, the more likely you are to eat. Fast food is said to be fast food because you eat it fast. Nobody eats their McDonald's hamburger really slow. In fact, if you like McDonald's hamburgers, eat your next hamburger really, really slowly. Chew it super, super slowly. And I guarantee you, you're going to notice that you're not going to want to eat as much. Same with the French fries. Any mushy food only tastes good when it's eaten really fast. Mushy foods do not taste good when they're eaten really slowly. On the other hand, slow eating will allow you to lose weight. Not to mention not eating before you go to bed. If you get heartburn in the middle of the night, try not eating for three or four or five hours before you go to bed. Not eating before you go to bed is a, a wonderful weight loss strategy. You go into ketogenesis much more readily, and as you generate ketones much more readily, and if you can skip breakfast, you have an even longer period of ketogenesis. Worldwide burden of cancer attributable to diabetes. I have been saying this for years. This is from The Lancet, one of the most respected medical journals on the planet. June 2018. Worldwide burden of cancer attributable to diabetes and high body mass index. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in this country. Heart disease is the first leading cause of death in this country. Between heart disease and cancer, you have the two leading causes of death. You throw in diabetes, you've got the top three. And because diabetes is responsible for heart disease and cancer, you got diabetes as the leading cause of death in this country and around the world. And diabetes is an eating disease. It is an eating disorder. Control the amount of carbs and sugar you eat, your diabetes will go away. You don't need drugs to do it. You need a little bit of willpower because we're hardwired to crave diabetes-inducing foods. So you need to override that hard wiring with consciousness, with, with intention, with volition. But it can be done. And if you're dealing with elevated blood sugar or diabetes, you definitely want to do it. Speaking of diabetes, from uh, the Diabetes Canada Research Center, published in the Journals of Gerontology, just two weeks of inactivity can trigger diabetic symptoms in vulnerable patients, just two weeks without much activity, can have a dramatic impact on health from which it is difficult to recover, according to researchers who studied overweight older adults at risk of developing type 2 diabetes. This is especially important, this idea of inactivity leading to blood sugar problems and inactivity leading to blood fat issues. It's especially relevant for older patients who tend to be less active. As we get older, it becomes extra important to concentrate on activity. When you're a kid, you don't have to worry about it so much because you're naturally active. You naturally have energy. But as we get older, as we age, the tendency is for the body to slow down, again, through volition, through consciousness, through intention. You can override that by getting on a rebounder. That's one of the best ways to do it because it's easy on the joints. Jumping up and down on a rebounder for two minutes in the morning, two minutes in the afternoon. If you're at work and you have an office, get a rebounder. Put it in your office. We keep a rebounder in my lab so that in the middle of the day we can jump on it. I jump on it twice a day. Only need a couple of minutes. Just huff and puff for a little bit. Doesn't take much. Just two weeks of inactivity can trigger diabetic symptoms. So what does that say for people who are inactive for months at a time? Of course you're going to be predisposed to diabetic problems. You don't hear that on the commercials for, for, for uh, insulin-like drugs. Doctors who prescribe insulin-like drugs, do they ever prescribe activity? Do they ever prescribe essential fatty acids? Do they ever prescribe omega-7 fatty acids? All right, one more, and we'll get your calls. 844 236 67. Heartburn medicine can increase the risk of kidney disease. People who take proton pump inhibitors, Nexium and Prilosec, for stomach acid reflux run a greater risk of chronic kidney, kidney disease than those who do not take them, according to an article in Gastroenterology. There are no safe drugs, even over the counter. Nexium and Prilosec not only increase risk for kidney disease, they also increase risk for dementia, increase risks for osteoporosis. Why? Because they deprive the body of nutrients by suppressing stomach acid. Stomach acid is your friend. You need stomach acid. You cannot absorb B, B vitamins or vitamin B12 particularly. You will be able to absorb minerals with, with much less efficacy. And you will be having problems 
processing and breaking down proteins without enough stomach acid. Do not suppress your stomach acid chronically. You're playing with fire. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to the phones and say good morning to Elaine. What's going on, Elaine in Alaska? How are you doing this morning? Hey, good morning. I wish I could make it to your, I think you're doing a lecture tomorrow. Yes, thanks for reminding me. Tomorrow in Denver, Colorado, 11 a.m., we'll be talking about skin and nutrition, talking about the longevity products, and everybody who attends will get a free jug of Beyond Tangy Tangerine on me. And we will be doing these regularly, uh, hopefully every couple of weeks at my lab. 2240 Curtis Street in Denver, Colorado, if you're in the area, love to see you 11 a.m. Thanks for bringing that up, Elaine. How can I help you today? Yeah, I've got two uh, questions. Hopefully we can get both of them. One, I, I hear you talk about um, sun lamps, but I was curious what your opinion is on like your sort of like your standard tanning salon beds. The UVB is taken out of most standard tanning beds because that's the burning ray. The UVB is your vitamin D ray. On the other hand, you'll be exposing yourself to UVA, which is an aging ray. Uh, not a great idea. Sun lamps are good, though. I like this full spectrum sun lamps. Not a big believer in those tanning salons. Get a tan. Lay out in the sun. You know, get a well, real tan. Well, I, that, that's the problem up here in Alaska. Yeah, I know. So. I understand. Why don't you get a full spectrum sun lamp? Okay. That's okay. what I would do. You need okay. the UVB. The UVB is the one that gets the bad press, but it's the vitamin D ray, and you really need that. And in Alaska or any, uh, you know, Washington or any area where you don't get a lot of sun, uh, vitamin D de- deficiency can be an issue. In fact, uh, SAD, seasonal affective disorder, mood problems are associated with vitamin D deficiency. And also uh, uh, multiple sclerosis, MS, is associated, associated with vitamin D, D deficiency. Didn't you tell me that you had an issue with MS? Was it you or somebody you knew or something? My husband. Your husband. Yeah, you might want to think about a full-spectrum sun lamp uh, just to get him some vitamin D. What's your second question? And then the second question, I have a patient, and she's got some healing, slow healing issues, so I vitamin C. And her doctor said no. Doctor said what? No, don't take more vitamin C because it increases herpes zoster. Oh, really? Was this Dr. Knucklehead or Dr. Moron? (laughs) Which, Which doctor was it? Dr. Numbnuts, Dumb Skull, excuse me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get where these people say these things. I've never vitamin C heard that. is incredibly valuable for wound healing and it will not increase the risk for herpes. Hang on, let's finish up when we come back, okay, Elaine? I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening. Okay, we are back on the bright side and we do have lines open for you. 844 236 6010. We're talking to Elaine in Alaska. Uh, remind me what we were talking about, actually, Elaine. Sun lamps, yeah, vitamin uh, D. What do yeah, we leave off? Cold sores. You know, oh, yeah, herpes. cold sores. Shingles, Her- vitamin C. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Her doctor okay. told her. Don't I, don't know why, doc- I don't know why doctors say these nonsensical things, and I apologize for being rude. I, don't, I hate doing that. Just sometimes it's a reflex. I hear these crazy ideas yeah. like vitamin C. Ca- you said causes shingles? No, no, no. Uh, she has herpes zoster, so she'll have okay. the cold sore breakout. And okay. I well, encourage- herpes zoster is the shingles virus. It's the same virus. Okay. Right? It causes so- chicken pox and cold sores, et cetera. It's the same thing. And vitamin C is actually a treatment for that. Does he, did he say vitamin C would trigger a viral yeah. infection? Yeah. That, you know what? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to have to think that that's a misunderstanding, and no doctor would say that. that that's craziness. Right. Read so, Thomas uh, Levy. Uh, we've had him on the show. He's the he's a vitamin C expert. He's an MD and, a, and an attorney and a, a, a prolific writer. And he's written a lot about vitamin C. He call, has a book called The Primal Panacea. Uh, read anything by Dr. Uh, Dr. Thomas Levy. In fact, he does talk about using vitamin C as shingles. There's an interesting paper that came out a couple of years ago on using intravenous vitamin C to treat shingles. And when I say shingles, I'm, that's the herpes zoster virus. Uh, it was po- I forgot which... I forgot where it was published, but uh, just Google or, ha- or have your doctor Google intravenous vitamin C as a treatment for shingles, which is the herpes zoster virus. So I, I, I apologize. I, I didn't mean to be rude there. I hate doing that. But it just makes me so angry when I hear nonsense. I'm going to say that the patient misunderstood the doctor. No doctor could say something that silly, that vitamin C would trigger, trigger a, 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 a herpes zoster viral outbreak. On the yeah. other hand, ascorbic acid has been shown to have beneficial effects on herpes zoster that he, he may have misspoke like you know how trump said he should have said would instead of wouldn't i think the doctor might have misspoke he said and could instead of couldn't 
What was the What's name that? of the book? Uh, it's called The Primal Panacea. Great book on vitamin C. But Dr. Levy has several books about vitamin C. Uh, just Google Thomas Levy, Dr. Thomas Levy. Or uh, take a, do a search for, I forgot what journal this was published in, do a search for intravenous vitamin C as a treatment for shingles. And you'll get a really neat paper about that. And you might want to forward that to the doc. Okay. All right, Elaine, I got to motivate. Thank you so much for your right. call. Appreciate it. And thanks for listening to The Bright Side, being such a good, loyal listener. Appreciate that, too. Take care. Bye for now. Let's go to Amy in California, I think. Amy, is this yes. uh, Amy that called me yesterday? Yeah, you did get the message. Amy, Amy, Amy. Yeah, Amy, Amy gave me some good advice or some uh, raised a good point about fermented cod liver oil. And you know what, Amy? Um, I did check out Kayla Daniel, who and her. I like Kayla Daniel a lot. She wrote a, a really neat book on soy that is like the Bible about soy. If anybody's interested, Kayla Daniel, K A Y L A Daniel, D A N I E L. And she's also uh, she's also written about uh, fermented cod liver oil. We got a call yesterday or a couple days ago, maybe, about fermented cod liver oil. And I said that fermented cod liver oil is a uh, uh, the fermentation process is a nutrient releasing process. Kayla Daniel disagrees. Uh, she says that ferment fermentation is basically rotting and rancidity. And you know what? She, I've done, I looked at her book and got online, did some research, and she may have a point. Uh, and, and I think that's what you're calling about, right, Amy? Yeah, it is. And I really, I just come from my heart because you do a great job. And I love it. Ben, you are, you're an amazing um, gift to humanity about the truth oh. of nutrition and skin care. And, you. you know, you've got, nobody's perfect. There's no perfect human being. But I think what would be really neat is if people, you know, downloaded her ebook or, you know, don't be a human experiment. Um, yeah, I did I, try it. Yeah, it doesn't taste I, very good, apparently. I hadn't heard about it before we got the call, so I didn't really know much about it. Although, fermenta I do know fermentation releases nutrients, so I'm still not sure why she says uh, that there's less nutritional value, although her point about rancidity is definitely uh, well taken. But it seems to me like the fermentation would actually release the vitamin D and the vitamin A. So I'm not sure why she says it has less nutritional value. But the, the, the rancidity issue, that's, that makes sense to me. Yeah, and the, you know, the other reality is people are having reactions with heart problems and things like that that are scary. And, you know, don't be a human experiment. Use what you have, Carlson's, that's an amazing uh, fish oil. I would just be safe rather than be, you know, sorry until you really have the evidence. That's my feeling on it. So I only wanted to send that out to people. Thank to really you. Appreciate it. Paper. Yeah, it's... Uh, hey, that's kind of a controversy because the company that first came out with it, I forgot the name of the company, but they were pretty famous. Um, green Pasture. Yes, Green Pasture, exactly. Uh, when Green Pasture came out with it, they published a bunch of data that showed that it was much, had much more nutritional value than ordinary cod liver oil. But recently I noticed that that data is not up on their website any longer. Uh, and they say they're redoing their data. So, you know, Dr. Daniel's point is definitely well taken. I do like her work. And Kayla, by the way, is spelled K A A. Y L A double A, um, and and I do appreciate her work. So uh, I would I would take her stuff pretty seriously. And she says not to use it. She does have that uh, a free ebook for anybody who's interested. Uh, and I think who is it that called me? I forgot who it was that called about that. Uh, my buddy Dave. Oh, it's Dave in Michigan. Uh, if you're listening, Dave in Michigan, why don't you get that book? The free ebook is called Hook Line and Stinker. And it's a free ebook by Kayla Daniel about fermented cod liver oil. And I thank you for bringing that up, bringing that to my attention, because I did not know that, Amy. Oh, so no anything worries. else? Yeah. Could I make another fun comment sure. on uh, diabetes? You yes. know, Dr. Joel Furman is doing a study where children actually heal themselves of diabetes on a raw plant-based diet. And I mean, it's like, it's a, such a huge success. I believe he's writing a book, but you should. he wants to That's make great. sure he, he gets enough uh, evidence, you know, enough uh, uh, studies done to really prove it works. But it's interesting because when you eat animal protein, they show it spikes blood sugar. And Can say that again? Would, so, hang on. Say that one more time. Animal protein actually spikes your blood sugar. Um, all protein, all protein can spike your blood sugar, animal protein or plant protein. I do not believe that it, that plant animal protein has a higher blood sugar spiking effect than ordinary protein. Um, although the building proteins, the BCAAs, which animal protein contains may have that effect. So I think it might be possible, but you, you can get BCAAs in beans, for example. So beans would have the same effect. I, I don't know if I put the onus on animal protein, but 
Um, all protein, it's true, can spike your blood sugar. And that is something to consider if you're going paleo or you're trying to eat more protein. People don't realize that the protein can have a blood sugar spiking effect, but I don't know if it's specifically animal protein. And then it would, you know, to me, depend on how well the animal was fed. If he's eating junk food, you know, you're probably going to get some junk sugar in his protein. Who knows? You know. Well, you no, that's get... an interesting point you make because when uh, guys like Furman and, and T. Colin Campbell and and these uh, uh, nutritionists with an agenda, I, I, nutritionists should not have an agenda. They should just be honest, honest brokers, information brokers. But guys like Furman and Neil Barnard and um, uh, uh, T. Colin Campbell, they have an agenda. A plant agenda, and and they should disclose that. And the fact of the matter is, is when we talk about protein, protein is protein. But when you ha talk about protein-containing foods, that's different from protein. And if you try to make a an assessment about a protein-containing food, when you're really talking about a protein, then you have to deal with all the the carbs that are in the protein-containing food and all the all the toxins that the animal eats. But the pure protein itself, just the protein itself, is not not necessarily a problem. It's the like you say, what they're feeding the animals. If you're eating a protein-containing food, but just the protein itself, you're not going to have to worry about the antibiotics and the hormones necessarily. Necessarily, you may have there may be some some over overlap if some of that stuff gets, gets deposited in the protein. But for the most part, when we blame protein containing, uh, when we blame protein, what we're really blaming is the protein containing food, which is distinct from the protein. Hope that makes sense because that's an important point. And, yeah. uh, go, go ahead, Amy. Make one last fun comment. I didn't know this. Maybe you said this fact, but just eating one serving of French fries at a fast food restaurant per week increases breast cancer twenty six percent. I'm not Isn't surprised. That crazy? I know yeah. we're talking. Yeah, the fats, the trans fats, the deep fried fats. Now that really is a problem. That's a major problem. The protein, you know, the protein containing foods, et cetera, they, that can be an issue. Too much protein, it gets turned into blood sugar, but not like trans fats, not like deep fried fats. Lay off the deep fried fats. If you just lay off the deep fried fats, just that move alone, you can do have tremendous, tremendous cholesterol lowering, blood thinning, antiarrhythmic, cardiovascular health benefits. It, just one simple move, laying off, uh, laying off deep fried fats and trans fats for that matter. Best way to wean yourself off of those kinds of foods is to make sure you're giving yourself the good fats, the fats that are found in eggs, the fats, the fats that are found in fish and the fats that are found in the ultimate EFAs from Longevity. Supplemental fats and good dietary fats and it is a great way to wean yourself off that. The fat craving, the, the fats that are, uh, that we ingest because of our fat craving drives that are built into us. Human beings find fats irresistible, so preempt those, that fat drive or hack into that fat, fat drive by giving yourself good fats. Thanks for calling, Amy. I appreciate it. And, oh, I'm sorry, Amy. I uh, hung up on you accidentally. Anyway, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products and truth treatments.com for all our truth skin health products. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.